Good morning. Myself Manoj, working as assistant professor in EC department, Chebro Engineering College, Chebro. And today's topic is common emitter configuration. So, as we know, a transistor is a semiconductor device, a three-terminal semiconductor device, which has capacity, which has capability of amplifying the input signal. Okay. So, a transistor can be configured into three configurations. Common emitter, common base, and common collector configurations. Of this, we're today we're going to deal common emitter configuration, right? So, common emitter configuration. Here, by seeing the title, we can say emitter is common in this configuration, right? So, a transistor has three terminals: emitter, base, collector. So that emitter is common now. In common emitter configuration, emitter is common for both input and output terminals, so that emitter is grounded. So what will happen if emitter is grounded? Then base becomes input, and collector becomes output terminal. Okay, base becomes input terminal, and collector becomes output terminal in this configuration. So base and emitter, it is now input terminal, and Collector and emitter forms output terminal. So in common base, common emitter configuration, base is the input terminal, collector is the output terminal, and emitter is common for both input and output. That means the base terminal and common emitter terminal are known as input terminals, whereas collector terminal and common emitter terminal are known as output terminals. Right? In common emitter configuration, emitter terminal is grounded. So, the common emitter configuration is also called grounded emitter configuration, right? And then is the circuit diagram and schematic, right? If it is a schematic, emitter is common, emitter is grounded, right? So we know that in transistor there are three regions: emitter, base, and collector. Emitter is highly doped. base is lightly doped and collector is moderately doped right and the width of emitter is high the width of base is very very less and the width of collector is much more greater than emitter region width so as we are sandwiching p type semiconductor in between two n type semiconductors this is called npn configuration npn transistor right so if i sandwich n type semiconductor material between two p type semiconductors it will form pnp transistor right even if i use pnp transistor or npn transistor in common emitter configuration emitter is grounded and base is the input terminal and collector is output terminal so base and emitter forms input terminals and collector and emitter forms output terminals so the junction between emitter and base is called input junction and the junction between base and collector is known as output junction input junction is also called junction je and output junction is also called junction jc so input junction or je is formed between emitter and base highly doped emitter and lightly doped base whereas junction jc output junction is formed between lightly doped base region and moderately doped collector region right so irrespective of type of configuration and irrespective of type of transistor npn or pnp transistor input junction is always forward biased and output junction is always reverse biased so here the input junction is je between base and emitter and output junction is jc in common emitter configuration and it is formed between collector and base right so input junction is always forward bias in order to make np transistor input junction forward bias then what i have to do i have to give positive terminal of 
battery VBE to base region and nearly terminal of battery is connected to emitter region. As it is NPN transistor, as it is NPN transistor, the p-type base is connected to positive of VBE, okay, voltage source, and nearly terminal of battery VBE is connected to n-type region, which is emitter region, okay. So this makes junction J E forward biased, right? So I am using here notation V B E. V B E is the voltage between base and emitter. It represents the voltage between base and emitter. That's it. And in order to make collector junction J C, output junction J C, reverse bias. So what I have to do? I have to connect positive terminal of battery VCE to N type collector and negative is grounded. As emitter is grounded, the negative term is connected to emitter region, that's it. Right? So this makes the transistor to work in active region. So in active region, in active mode, if I want to use a transistor to amplify the input signal, then input junction must be forward biased and output junction must be reverse biased. Right, so diagram which you are seeing at the top of the screen is a circuit diagram. Right, the schematic NPN is represented by symbol of transistor, NPN transistor. Make sure for NPN transistor, the arrow mark on emitter region determines the flow of current. Right, so so here. The input junction is forward biased by voltage source VBE and output junction is reverse biased by voltage source VCE. Right? And now let us move on to PNP transistor. Okay. In PNP transistor, the right side of the uh, screen you are seeing the diagram now, it is NP PNP transistor. Right? So, as I said now, emitter is grounded and we have to make junction, input junction forward bias and output junction reverse bias so that the n type base is connected to negative terminal of battery vbb here i am using double subscript notation vbb is the voltage given to base it is called double subscript notation right vbb on positive terminal of battery vbb is connected to emitter region which is grounded which is grounded and now to make junction JC reverse bias the P type collector region is connected to negative terminal of battery VCC VCC is the voltage source the VCC represents here double subscript rotation right so positive is grounded positive terminal of VCC is grounded so what is VBE then and what is VCE then VBE is the voltage across junction input junction so it is the voltage developed across emitter and base and vce is the voltage developed at junction jc which is output junction okay so the schematic is as shown and also it is equipped with uh, symbol and Direction of currents is are as shown in the figure. Now, the common emitter configuration is used when large current gain is needed. Okay, common base configuration is used where voltage gain is needed. Where I want, where I need voltage amplification, voltage gain if I need. I use common base configuration. Common emitter configuration is used where I need large current gain, right? The input signal is applied between the base and emitter terminals while output is taken between collector and emitter terminals. Thus, emitter terminal of transistor is common for both input and output and hence it is named as common emitter configuration, right? The supply voltage between base and emitter is suited by VBE or it is the voltage developed across base and emitter well the supply voltage between this uh, 
between collector emitter is denoted by VCE or it is the voltage developed across collector and emitter region right the common emitter configuration input current is base current denoted by IB and output current is collector current denoted by IC right so the so the common emitter amplifier has medium input and output impedance levels so current gain voltage gain of common emitter amplifier is medium however power gain is high to fully describe the behavior of transistor of ce configuration we have to draw the characteristics which are called input characteristics and output characteristics so i am taking here npn transistor configuration npn transistor configuration so input junction je must be forward biased so that i am giving positive supply vbb to base through a potentiometer and neutral terminal of vbb is connected to ground where emitter terminal is connected right in order to measure voltage between base and emitter i am taking voltage voltmeter which is vbe it is the input voltage input voltage across transistor in order to color in order to uh, know input current ib i am using ammeter right so make sure that always ammeter is connected in series and always voltmeter is connected in parallel okay here i am using microamp ammeter why because input current is ib here ib is in microamp level okay current ib is very very less when compared to ic and ie ic and ie are in the range of milliamps and ib is in the range of microamps only okay it is very small current likewise if i take output side output terminal must be reverse biased to make np transistor reverse bias at the output junction so i am connecting pulse 2 of vcc to collector terminal and negative to ground okay in order to measure voltage across junction j e j c sorry j c i'm using voltmeter to measure the voltage which is vce and i'm using milliamp ammeter to measure collector current ic okay so here also the volt is voltmeter connected in parallel and ammeter is connected in series right here VBB and VCC are the voltage sources. Okay. VBB is the voltage source. A DC voltage source connected to base terminal. That's why it's called VBB. Double subscript notation VBB. And VCC is the voltage source connected to connected terminal and ground. Right. So in double subscript notation I call it VCC. So, here the voltmeter measures the voltage at input and output terminals, right? So, VBE is the voltage developed at base and emitter region and VC is the voltage developed at output junction, okay? So, input characteristics. What are input characteristics? Input characteristics describe the relationship between input current and input voltage. Okay. Input characteristics are always drawn between input voltage versus input current by making output voltage constant at different levels. Okay. Always input characteristics are drawn between input voltage versus input current by making output voltage constant irrespective of type of configuration. Whether it may be common emitter, common base or common emit, common collector configurations. In respect of any configurations, input characteristics are always drawn between input voltage versus input current by making output voltage constant at different levels. Okay. In common emitter configuration, input current is IB and input voltage is VBE, okay, junction voltage, which is the input voltage for transistor, right, VBE. So, a graph is drawn between VBE versus IB, right? By 
making output voltage constant at different levels. Here, in combinatorial configuration, VCE is the output voltage developed across output junction of transistor. So, I have to draw characteristics between input voltage VBE versus input current IB for different fixed values of VCE. So, what I will do? I will make VCE constant at different level and I will vary VBB here such that VBE is varied and also IB increases. Okay. So, if I vary VBB here, then input voltage and input current will also vary. Okay. By making output voltage constant at different level. Suppose that VC equal to 0. Let us suppose VC equal to 0 means I am making VCC equal to 0. If I make VCC equal to 0, then VCE will become equal to 0. So, I am making VC constant at 0 level, 0 volts. And if I vary VBB, then VBE varies and also IB varies. So, I will draw a plot between VBE and IB by making VCE 0. Now, the process is repeated at different fixed values of VCE. Okay. Now, let us suppose VCE is now fixed at 1 volt. Let us suppose. How I will make it equal to 1 volt? If I vary VCC, then VCE is varied. Such So, I will vary VCC such that VCE becomes 1 volt constant. And now, I will vary VBB again and plot the graph between VBE and IB. The process is repeated for different values of VCE. So, first of all, I draw a vertical line and horizontal line to plot the characteristics. The vertical line represents y-axis and horizontal line represents x-axis. The input current or base current is taking along y-axis, the vertical line, and the input voltage VBE is taken along x-axis, the horizontal line. To determine the input characteristics, the output voltage VCE is kept constant at 0 volt, let us suppose, and the input voltage VBE is increased from 0 volts to different voltage levels. How I will vary VBE? If I vary VBB, then VC will, VB, VBE will be varied. So, to determine the input characteristics, output voltage is kept constant at 0 level, let us suppose, and the input voltage VBE is increased from 0 volt to different voltage levels. For each value of voltage level, input voltage level, note the corresponding reading of IB. Okay, and plot in the graph. So, I will get characteristics like this. Let us suppose when VC equal to 0, when VC equal to 0, VC equal to 0 means what? VC equal to 0 means what? Always input tension is forward biased and output tension is reverse biased. So now I am making output junction VCE equal to 0 means reverse bias here applied is 0. So just the input circuit forms a forward bias P and diode. That's it. So, so when VCE equal to 0, when reverse bias voltage is 0, just transistor acts as a forward by SP and diode. So, the characteristics are like this. Equal to the characteristics of forward by SP and diode. VC equal to 0. If I increase VC, let us suppose VC equal to 10 volts. If I increase VCE, what will happen? Let us move on to schematic. When VCE is increased, what will happen? Reverse bias is increased much more. So, junction JC is forward, uh, sorry, sorry, junction JC is reverse biased. Okay. And I am applying now high reverse voltage VCE, 10 volts. So, what will happen? The depletion region width at junction JC increases drastically. Drastically. So, what will happen? If I, if, if I go on increasing VCE, then depletion region width will increase much more at junction JC. 
if depletion region width increases what will happen the resistance at junction jc will increases the resistance at junction jc will increases so if the resistance increases what will happen input current reduces input current reduces ib will be reduced so for a given voltage vbe for a given voltage vbe for the given voltage vbe if i increase vce what will happen the current will be reduced so the graph shifts towards right side so if i increase vce to 20 volts if i increase vce to 20 volts what will happen what will happen simply current reduces much more so the graph shifts towards left side <coughs> excuse me so likewise the curve is drawn between input volt input current ib and input voltage vbe at constant output voltage vce okay now take different values of vce now take different values of vce and increase vbe and note the value of ib and plot it on the graph so this is the graph we will get in common emitter configuration for input characteristics okay next in commutator configuration input current iv is very small as compared to input current in common base configuration okay in common base configuration ie is the input current and ic is the output current if you recall the concept for common base configuration ie is the input current and ic is the output current right for common base configuration so ie input current is high in order of milliamps and also output current is also in milliamps in common base configuration but here in common emitter configuration input current is ib which is in microamp range and output current is ic which is in milliamp range so in common emitter configuration input current is less output current is high right so in in common emitter configuration input current is produced in base region which is lightly doped and a small width as you recall transistor is a three terminal semiconductor device with emitter is highly doped base is lightly doped and connector is moderately doped and the width of emitter is high and width of base is very very less and width of collector region is much more greater than the width of emitter region so the base region produces only a small current ib which is an order of microamps on the other hand in common base configuration let us compare it with common base configuration the input current ie is produced in the emitter region which is heavily doped and has large width so emitter region produces a large input current ie therefore input current ib produced in common emitter configuration is small as compared to common base configuration input current of common base configuration right so due to forward bias the emitter base junction acts as forward bias diode and due to reverse bias the collector base junction acts as reverse bias diode as just now i have described in the circuit diagram therefore the width of depletion region at the emitter base junction is very small whereas width of depletion region at collector base junction is very large if the output voltage vc is applied to collector base junction is further increased so if i increase so if i increase vce much more much more what will happen the depletion region width further increases the base region is slightly doped as compared to collector region so the depletion region penetrates much more into base region and less into collector region as a result width of base decreases which in turn reduces input current ib in the base region so what will happen 
from our above characters from this characteristics we can see that for higher fixed values of output voltage vce the curve shifts towards right side this is because for higher fixed values of output voltage the getting voltage is increased above 0.7 volts therefore to overcome this getting voltage the more input pb is needed than the previous case that's why the graph shifts towards left side sorry sorry right side right side okay so this is about input characteristics so move on to output characteristics now always output characteristics are drawn between output voltage versus output current by making input current constant by making input current constant at different values different fixed values so irrespective of type of transistor whether it may be npn or pnp and irrespective of type of configuration whether it may be common base or common emitter or common collector the output characteristics are always drawn between output voltage versus output current for different fixed values of input current ie okay so in common emitter configuration the output current is ic and output voltage is vce so we have to draw the characteristics between vce versus ic for different fixed values of input current which is ib input current is ib here so what i have to do i have to make ib fixed at different level and vary vce and i have to record collector current ic and i have to plot the characteristics between vce and ic for different fixed values of ib this is what i am going to do now so first of all the x axis determines output voltage and y axis represents output current ic okay to determine the output characteristics the input current or base current the input current for common base con sorry the input current the input character sorry the output characteristics i have to draw now so that the input current is ib for common emitter configuration so i am making it fixed at 0 microamp and output voltage is increased how i can vary output voltage if i vary vcc then vce is varied so and also ic is varied so i have to plot the graph between vce and ib vce and vce and ic for different values of ib sorry yes yes vce versus ic for different values of ib okay so that i am making ib constant at 0 microamp and i am varying vcc such that vce is increased and also ic varies so i have to draw graph between vce and ic okay so this is the graph which we will get if the characteristics are laid between vce and ic for different fixed values of ib in this graph you can see that the characteristics are not horizontal like in common base configuration in common base configuration if you look at output characteristics it is a horizontal line and spacing between the two graphs are equal but here if i take ib equal to 0 microamp and ib equal 10 microamp if i look at the characteristics for ib equal 0 microamp and ib equal to 10 microamp the width between these two curves is not fixed means the width between ib equal to 0 microamp and ib equal 10 microamp is not equal to the width between 10 microamp and 20 microamp and so on okay it is somewhat exponential graph we will get okay a curve is drawn between output current ic and output voltage vce at constant input current ib when the base current ib is 0 microamp transistor operates in cut off region in this region both junctions becomes reverse passed 
if the input current is increased from 0 microamp to 20 microamp, let us suppose by taking by adjusting input voltage VBE, the input current is kept constant at 20 microamp. While increasing the input current IB, the output voltage VC is kept constant at 0 volts. After we kept input current IB constant at 20 microamp, the output voltage VC is increased from 0 volts to different voltage levels. For each voltage level of input voltage VCE, the corresponding IC is recorded. Okay. So, it is repeated for higher values of IB, 30 microamp, 40 microamp, 50 microamp and so on and so forth. As we know the emitter based junction is already forward biased, therefore both the junctions are forward biased on the transistor operates in saturation region. In this region, a small increase in output voltage VCE will rapidly increase the output current IC. Okay, how, how it will be? I have the equation IC equal to IC equal to alpha IE plus ICP naught. IC equal to alpha IE plus ICP naught. How I will get this? IC means what? Collector current. IC means collector current. So collector current is the summation of currents in collector region due to majority and minority charge carriers. Therefore, I can write IC as IC majority plus IC minority. IC majority and IC minority. Okay. So, IC equal to IC majority. What is IC majority? Alpha IE. As alpha equal to alpha equal to IC by IE. So, IC majority will become alpha IE plus IC minority means ICB naught, reverse currents, ICB naught. So, ICB naught is the collector to base current when the emitter open. So, IC equal to alpha into IE means IC plus IB. Okay. Therefore, IC equal to alpha into IC plus IB plus ICB naught. So, if I rearrange this equation, I will get IC equal to alpha by 1 minus alpha into IB plus 1 by 1 minus alpha into ICB naught. Here, ICB naught is reverse saturation current. So, even when IB equal to 0, even when IB equal to 0, input current is 0. So, what will happen? IC equal to alpha by minus alpha into 0. So, the first term becomes 0. So, IC equal to 1 by 1 minus alpha into ICB naught will remain here. Even though ICB naught is very, very, very small as it is due to minority charge carriers, ICB naught, reverse saturation currents, ICB naught, collected to base current with emitter open. So, what will happen? It, even though ICB naught is very, very small, it is multiplied by the term 1 by 1 minus alpha. So, the collector current high C has some value even if IB equal to 0. So, if alpha varies by small amount, beta varies by large quantity. Okay. So, what is beta here? 1 by 1 minus alpha is beta. So, the last equation which you are seeing on the screen, I can write like this. IC equal to, IC equal to, alpha by 1 minus alpha into IB plus 1 by 1, so, uh, IC equal to alpha by 1 minus alpha into IB. Alpha by 1 minus alpha means beta. So, I can write like this. IC equal to beta into IB plus 1 plus beta into ICB naught. Since alpha by 1 minus alpha is represented by beta, and 1 by 1 minus alpha represented by 1 minus beta. So, what will happen? IC equal to beta into IB plus 1 minus beta into ICB naught. So, even if alpha varies by small amount, 
beta varies by large amount that's why we get a slope in common emitter configuration like this the slope is due to the term alpha by minus alpha and 1 by minus alpha okay so even though if ib is 0 even though if ib is 0 ic equal to 1 by minus alpha into ic b naught okay I, ic becomes 1 by 1 minus alpha into ic b naught so even though ic b naught is very very less it is multiplied by term 1 by 1 minus alpha therefore even though if ib equal to 0 we get current ic by small amount okay so there are three regions in the graph saturation region active region and cutoff region we don't want to make transistor operate in either cutoff or saturation we are much more interested in using a transistor in active region in order to use it as a amplifier okay this is about common emitter configuration thank you